Hey y'all, uh, imagine waking up one day and realizing that the main thing that you've been doing to lose weight and to keep it off and just to stay active is about to have to stop. That thing for me is walking. In today's video, I'm going to share with you the struggle that I've been having for probably going on a year now, but it's just gradually gotten worse. I'm in pain almost every day, but not 24 hours out of the day. And the pain is from a bunion. So I'm gonna be sharing with you all my personal journey and struggle with what I'm going to, be ha going to have to do to get rid of this pain. Now, I actually have been through this before because about 20 years ago, I had a bunion on my right, I mean, on my left foot that I had removed. So I kind of know what to expect. I know I'm going to have to be off of my feet or off of my foot for a while. Now, I heard all kinds of horror stories about people that had had bunion surgery and it grew back and all of that. Well, I'm here to tell you that my bunion never grew back. Now, I did have to listen to my doctor's advice and stop wearing very high heels. I used to wear like three inch, two and a half, three inch heels. Now, he told me though to just wear one inch heels, but I couldn't really do that. So I wear like two inch, two inch heels now or flats. But with dresses, I it's just something in me. I can't wear flat shoes with dresses. So I'm going to show you the scar from my right foot. And I'm going, I keep saying my right foot. I'm going to show you the scar from my left foot from the surgery I had about 20 years ago. So here it is. That's the scar. And you see there's no bunion and I can wiggle my toes and everything. It healed very nicely. So now that is my left foot. Now this ah, is my right foot and it hurts. It doesn't hurt when I rub it like that, but when I, when I go like this, that hurts. And Sometimes just when I walk, sometimes it just throbs just for no reason. Now, the one I, when I had the bunion on the, my left foot, it came out all the way like that. This one doesn't really come out that far, but it's more on the top. It's really weird. So anyway, that's that. To lose 20 plus pounds, I've been walking nine to 10,000 steps every day. I wanted to see if by just walking and not doing any other form of exercise, if I would be able to lose 30 pounds. And I haven't gotten to the 30 yet, but I have lost 20 plus pounds with walking only. So walking is near and dear to my heart because it's so easy to do and you can do other things like because most times I walk on the treadmill, even though I love going outside, but most times my schedule doesn't allow it. So I have to get on a treadmill, but I can watch my TV shows on a treadmill. I can read my Bible on the treadmill. There's so many things I can do while I'm walking. I brainstorm about videos while I'm, while I'm walking, everything. And so I'm going to have to give it up for a good period of time because I got to take care of this bunion. This pain is a lot. I did a little research, even though I've had bunion surgery before. But just FYI, a bunion is a bony bump that forms on the joint at the base of your big toe. It occurs when some of the bones in the front part of your foot move out of place. This causes the tip of your big toe to get pulled toward the smaller toes and forces the joint at the base of your big toe to stick out. The skin over the bunion might be red and sore. So I'm going to have to do this bunion surgery. Now, let me tell you, my family and friends always got the jokes about me having a bunion and having to have bunion surgery. I don't know why they think it's so funny, but I, 
but it's okay but they always want to have the jokes my other issue is that this is my right foot which means it's my driving foot so hopefully my nine to five nine to five thirty job will let me work remotely until my foot heals i'm going to take you all along on my journey of this bunion surgery it was kind of a hard decision to make to do this because i really don't want to stop walking i'm nervous about not being able to do all four pillars of Steph's system in order to maintain my weight loss because it's a lifestyle now it's not a diet it's, it's the way i live so i'm probably going i'm going to have to figure out what to tweak I'm going to have to be really strict on my carb intake and keep it at 25 grams the whole time that I'm unable to walk and make sure that I do everything else, my fasting for 20 hours, everything else the way, exactly the way I'm supposed to. But basically the, the thing that led me to make this final decision to have this surgery is the pain. As women, we can take a lot of pain. But when it comes to a foot and everyday pain, when I have to walk, oh, and then when I put on sh certain shoes, it's just painful and I don't want to, I don't want to feel the pain anymore. Now, I'd rather go and have the surgery and have some pain for six to eight weeks while it's healing and then it'll be done. That's the way it happened before with my other foot. So i can handle it i want to wait until after the holidays but before spring what do i need to do to prepare for this surgery well i have to find a new podiatrist because i looked up the one that the podiatrist that did the surgery on my left foot and he's not in my network anymore and i have to go to a doctor that's in network or else I will have to pay an arm and a leg, which I can't do. So I need my insurance to cover this procedure. So I had to do some research. I went on this uh, website called ZocDoc and it's pretty good. It, it helps you find a doctor. Um, it tells you, you, you get to put in what kind of doctor that you're looking for. And then if you know your exact kind of insurance that you have, it you can put that in and it will come up it'll populate all the doctors that are in your network and then you put in your zip code and it'll be doctors nearby close to your area so i found one and oh and it has reviews too so you can you can read what other patients have said about the doctor so i found one that seems to be really good he's not that close to me but he's about 30 minutes away which isn't that bad so um I'm going to check him out. I already made that re that reservation, that appointment. If you're looking to do any kind of procedure or surgery or need to find a doctor, I recommend you go on that on the ZocDoc website because it was very helpful for me, especially to read the reviews about the doctors. Next up is the recovery plan. I expect as before. Now I'm older. I'm about 20 years older, so it might take me a little bit longer to heal. I hope not, but that's what they say. The older you are, the longer, sometimes the longer it can take to heal. So I'm expecting six to eight weeks. Also, I know that um, the doctor will give me exercises to do for my feet. I can't remember the ones before, the ones I had to do before, but I think it was kind of like, ooh. <laughs> I had to squeeze it like that. Oh, I had to be able to um, squeeze a towel and pick, see if I could pick things up, pick things up with my feet and stuff like that. Right now with this, that was my good foot. <laughs> you don't want a good foot. Um, but with this foot, with the with the bunion on it, yes, oh, yes. it's all red. Um, with this foot, I can barely, I can't really flex flex my toes back well the other toes go but the big one doesn't anyway y'all 
So there's going to be foot exercises, but I'm also going to be researching um, some other exercises that I can do while I'm recovering to take the place of my walking because I just need to do something. I'm likely going to be doing some chair yoga. I'm going to look up some YouTube videos or something like that. And I'll let you guys know what I find. I will have to remember to stay positive. I'm usually a very positive person anyway, but you know, when you're hurting and when you're in pain, sometimes you start to feel sorry for yourself. And I just want to stay out of that space. One way that I'm going to try to remain positive is by continuing to tell myself that once this is over, I'm going to feel so much better. My foot is going to be back to normal and I won't be feeling the pain every day. Another thing that helps me to stay positive is to read my Bible. When I read my Bible, it reinforces the knowledge of who God is to me and how much I mean to him. I know that once I am healed, I am going to return to walking. If you have some encouraging words, some tips, some advice for me or for anyone else that might be watching this video, please share. I would love to hear from you. Also, don't forget to subscribe. So now you know what I've been struggling with for the last year, even though I haven't let it stop me making progress. If you have some kind of challenge, I know that you can make it through. Just keep the positive attitude. You can do it too. So this will be a series on my surgery and recovery. If you are a woman and you're over 40, if you're going through menopause, which is the situation that I was in, check out these two videos. Thank you for watching and see you in the next video.